Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, I got something really simple but really important here to show you, especially when you're building an amplifier like this or you're using motors or anything else that may take a big inrush current, meaning that when you first start it, um, it sucks in a lot of current. Now, Having a capacitor bank like this will suck in a lot of current. Now, all these will charge up very, very quickly. The low ESR, they will charge up really quickly. And what that will do is put a lot of tension um, and probably go above and beyond what this transformer is able to give you in current. And the same thing if you're using an auto transformer like this one here, it will have its own maximum current rating. On this one, it's 2.5 amps. And so if you just whack down, let's say, uh, you know, this is set at 235 or whatever voltage it is around about there, and I just clamp that down, that needle is gonna bounce across here and it's gonna indicate that it's absorbed very quickly in a very small space of time a lot more current than what it's rated for, and that can damage it. And the same thing, if this isn't on here, normally I wind this up slowly um, to uh, prevent that, but if it's just left in that state where it's high, high voltage, um, it can do that. And at the same time, that can happen here as well, because this will be, if this is only rated for three amps, which is round about where it is, a little bit higher, but if it's only rated for, you know, about three amps and it's pulling, let's say, five amps through it, again, it's going to put a lot of tension on these wires, um, on these turns, and you can end up damaging your, your transformers, and you don't want to do that. So I've got a little demonstration to show you. Uh, it's not focused on this, really. I should be covering this up now, because we don't really want to be looking at this. Um, is I'm going to use here a standard car headlamp yeah so this is uh you know you put 13 volts into it uh, 13.8 is what you'd normally be driving with but never mind we're not really going for that all i'm going to show you now is how quickly this lights and how quickly on the on the power supply it gets up to its pretty much maximum current so this thing's good for about five and a half to six and a half um, amps depending on what you're driving it with if you're driving on a car you know you're not really using 14 volts but we're just got it on 13 volts for here so just have a look at this one. Oh, we only got one side why did we only get one side i got no idea because we haven't gone through it and set this up so in here we're going to system go here track set and put it on enable even though it's enabled on the first bit i don't know why it does that it's a little bit annoying but here we go, take two. <laughs> and it comes on really quickly. And as you can see on the voltage on the current over there, one side we've got 2.7, nearly 2.8 amps. And on the other side, we've got 3.2 amps. Okay. And that was very quick how it got there. Now, this is just to just show the difference between the sort of timing and how, how this actual little, little device here works. This is a uh, inrush current limiter. This one's an NTC, which is a negative temperature coefficient. Um, what it will do is, while it's sort of cold here, it's got its maximum resistance. Yeah, we don't need to go into numbers, but it's got its maximum resistance while it's cold. And when it gets hot, it goes down to its minimum resistance and so that means that for that first little bit of time when that current is surging through this thing's cold and it will prevent that current from surging through so fast and then as time goes by and it starts warming up and it will be warm and it will be hot while it's in use um, that current because the resistance will go down lower that current will be able to flow a lot more freely all it does is it just it just reduces that inrush and that's what you want now depending on your circuit depending on what type of uh, what size inrush current limits you mean bin size i mean uh, the ohmage and the ampage but that's 
not the point, it's not the scope of this, um, uh, this video. All I want to show you is, one, looking again on here, you'll see the decline of current and you'll also see the difference in timing of how quickly the bulb goes to its brightness. So let's switch this on again. Then you see there was a pause, a delay there, and you can see on one side, yeah, it's saying 3.2 amps, but on the other side, it's, it's climbing up because as that resistance goes lower and lower, yeah, we get more current coming through. And that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to do that before we start seeing smoke coming off our uh, whatever it is. <laughs> it just looked like they might, uh, I mean, there could be just something on the lens there. But that's it, that's the little demonstration. It's very important, and is what I'm trying to say to you is if you're building, you know, um, amplifier circuits or any other circuit, but in this instance, we're talking about amplifiers that are going to be using, taking up some juice. We're talking about amplifiers that are going to want some reservoir because if you're uh, having some bass on the go and it pulls down the voltage on your transformer, what will happen is that your bass will distort, you know, your amplifier will clip out, it will distort. And so you have these reservoir banks. And so if it does pull this down, this steps in in order to keep that you know, nice undistorted sound. And that's why you have quite a few of them. And if you have them like this, of course, uh, it's even better than just having one a big one like 15 millifarad or something, or even two. I did two on the last one, but that's still better than one. That's it. I hope you uh, have learned something from that, because I know there's some guys out there talking about building these amps, and for the amp, you're going to need a power supply. In this instance, this is the power supply for this amp uh, for one channel. Remember, this is one channel, and this is just over 30 millifarads. Of capacitor bank but one channel to ensure this thing can drive and deliver uh, what you want it to be able to um, uh, drive and you know, deliver your sound quality and drive that speaker if you got this far guys thank you very much for watching and i will catch you in the next one